Hello everybody, welcome back to XCOM Iron Man Impossible. We're uh, getting started on our next mission, uh, which should be in Africa as soon as I can figure out where mission control is. There we go. <laughs> Alright, so, we have alien abductions. Uh, it looks like Alexandria, Egypt is where we're headed since we've got the engineers. So, I'm going to go ahead and head, give some people a uh, good go. Alright, so our heavy was wounded, our sniper was killed in the last mission, which means that all we've got left is the assault and uh, two new, three new rookies. Uh, Miss Matridis, rookie Joe Hamison, and uh, rookie Daryl Dixon here. So uh, I think we're probably good in terms of customization and everything like that. We want to take grenades in. Uh, not sure if we want anybody with medkits at the moment. Our assault trooper... yeah. Could be worth it to buy a med kit, but I think I want to save the money. Um, typically, with just one squaddy available, there's not actually anybody that I'm going to want to uh, try to protect. And in impossible mode, people often kill you instead of critically wounding you, so you don't usually get a lot of bringing a med kit along until the council missions. All right, so here's the abduction. Dropship has arrived. Looks like they're pretty close by. We're dropping you just inside and the Egyptian border. Operation Crystal. Alien activity continues to surge within several major cities. Our response is crucial to minimizing the spread of panic. I think that's a new voice acting line, which is kind of neat. Um, from the look at this map, there's going to be a lot of low cover, but a couple of points of high cover as well. Uh, bulldozers and that kind of thing all look pretty good. Uh, but this should be brand new, so with any luck, we'll see some pretty sweet stuff going on. All right, everybody's headed out. Central, this is Big Sky. Strike team is okay, now. So, Roger, Big Sky. Reading you five by five. Strike one has the green light for deployment. Obviously, we want to find that meld if we can. Oh, and we can actually see it. It's right over there. So, I think if it's right over there, I definitely want to be peering closely. Be it. Alright, looks like I'm fine to go ahead and advance on it. That'd be a straight dash across for this guy. So I think what I'm going to do is actually push forward a little bit. Uh, apparently she's found some meld. I can't actually understand her, but uh, Miss Hernandez is certainly going to get the job done. Alright, so we got some other things going on here. This greenhouse has a window that allows you to look out but not in, which is very classy. I really like that option. There's half cover on the roof, which uh, uh, you saw how well that worked out for me last time. But this building here has hard cover and a little bit of an elevation, so I'm going to go ahead and peek in and see if we can get anything done there. There's plenty of hardcover to use. I really liked all of the new maps so far because there's been lots and lots of hardcover that I can take and uh, just lots of good options in general. I think they've generally recognized that uh, hardcover is super important. So. Alright, no sign of them. This meld is definitely what I'm after, so we're gonna push forward a little bit trigger anybody. We feel a little risky going here, but I think it's definitely the right call. I could run and gun, which might be a solid option, except that, I mean, what am I going to do, overwatch? No, I think I'm good. Alright, I didn't trigger it, and since this rookie has... I can't just claim it, right? I don't actually know how to claim them. <laughs> uh, I might have to be on my turn, actually, which is interesting. All right, well, we'll make a note of that next time. Um, go ahead and push our Mr. Dixon out. Johannesson, do I want you on the roof? No, I think you're good. Good to go. Look the wall. Solid copy. Deep. Okay. I'll go watch. Aye, aye. Got it covered. 
I made a slight mistake here in putting Mr. Nixon in Overwatch, but uh, we did get that meld. Oh, and the sound indicates that the other can of meld is back in this area, where I am absolutely certain to encounter aliens. Um, well, let's see here. I think what we want to do is work on a flank. Where's the very back of this map? So the very back of that map is actually pretty far along. Um, ooh, but we can get up on the roof. Ah, I like this plan already. Alright, so we're going to get up on this roof next turn and uh, use it to establish a better flank. The roofs are a little curved, so I have to be a little careful. But, we should be able to push forward. Alright. So we have our aliens visible. They all dashed into some pretty solid positions. What I want to do is be behind cover that... Oh. This is a pit. Interesting. This cover here will provide them with concealment, and also will prevent me from getting flanked by aliens. Although... From the looks of it, there's only one entrance, two entrances, in or out, which means that this is actually just a death trap for them. Um, Alright, so before I push in any further on these aliens, I need to make sure that I'm not going to get surprised by anyone else. Let's open up this door real quick. And if I can push up through this wall, yeah, that'll make me nice and comfy with where I'm at. Okay, so that means that I can get this guy into concealment. This guy... Well, I could opt for a possible shot from the roof. Which might actually be an option next turn. Let's see here. How does that line up? I didn't see where that last alien was hiding. But I might actually have a flanked elevation shot. So I think I'm going to peek up and see if I can get it. And if I can't, I'll just dash back down and hide behind the building. Okay, so I can't get it, but it is a 65% chance to hit. Uh, we saw how well this worked last time, so we have to be a little careful. But another option that I have is tossing a grenade. Huh, apparently I can blow up milk canister, so I'll be careful about that. Um, yeah, I think I'm pretty satisfied with that. 65% chance to hit that guy behind the cover. Other options. No concealment available this close. I think for the purpose of momentum, I actually want to take this shot. If I miss, then obviously Johannesson is a pretty serious target, but at the same time, it's a rookie, so let's give it a shot. Alright, so we're having some repeat business from last time. Uh, with that in mind, I think it's a good idea to go ahead and push this character forward some more. Get her behind the hardest cover that she can be in. And force that alien to move around. Alright, I see aliens in back there, setting up uh, some interesting options. Looks like the half cover is good enough for now. And we have a second. Yes, indeed. Okay. So this alien's running for cover, but probably going to take shots at the. Okay, no, we're safe. Well. So, um, I can very easily kill one of these aliens, but not both of them. What I can also do is try and get a real position on one of these guys. That alien's obviously a little too far out, so I don't think I can do anything about him. Um, if I set up here, I'll definitely have that one, but then I'll get a flank shot, so life will be tough for me. I think it's perfectly safe Watch to take this map. Wow! <laughs> so, about that meld. Um, Alright, 
Oh god. Oh, oh god. Um, I thought it was perfectly safe to take that meld. I now have a shot at the alien that is my melding. But it's not actually a real shot or anything. It's just a pretend shot that I don't actually have. Um, okay, so I want to back up into some serious concealment here if I can. Uh, this should protect me against all comers. This is still concealment. And with all four of those guys revealed, I could probably do something like... No, that wouldn't work. Um, I could get up on the roof. Odds are pretty good the aliens couldn't see me from there. Let's take a look. If something goes wrong, we can always run and gun. Alright, I can still see an alien, which means that I'm in trouble. Um, this was not actually a good plan or anything. It just looked like one on paper. Um, let's go ahead and dash oh, yeah, in here and get behind the bridge. Alright, now we've got one alien who can see me, which I think is a lot better than all of the aliens being able to see me. Uh, this guy can't see anybody else, so he's he's completely hidden. Guy on the roof has some terrible shots, so we're not going to do anything with him. I think instead we're going to get him behind something. I'm going to want to fall back to some better cover if I can. Ah, I'm all over. over. Oh, we're perfect. Alright, um, we're definitely going to need to set up some overwatches, because if these aliens continue to advance, we're going to be in trouble. The alien who's getting mind melded is healing each time that he's melted, which sucks. There are a lot of melts going on. So one noticeable opportunity has opened up. Especially with that person down. If that guy doesn't overwatch, I think I'll be in better shape. Okay, my wall is gone. I have no cover there. And it looks like I actually am going to get an overwatch shot. With an elevation bonus. Settingly, I can't kill all of the aliens I want to in this turn. Um, I'm still not flanked, though. That's half cover, which is not what I want. Uh, looking for better shots, better angles. Is there a double chain going on here? It looks like one of those aliens has somehow... Interesting. Okay. So I can see that alien there. And I have a pretty good shot at him. That shot's gonna be even better if I just throw a grenade here. And destroy the shit out of his cover. And we'll also set some fires. Do some bad Grenade out! <laughs> This is the safest shot I can take this turn, so we're definitely going to take it. Still a 65% chance. I guess I didn't destroy his cover. But at least I have one. Um, okay. So the problem I'm having is that I really, really, really want to flank. But I can't flank without getting murdered. Um, I can push ahead here. That'll get me flanked by that guy. If I push ahead here, I'll get flanked by that guy. 
What I want to do is get behind this thing and shoot him in the face, but that'll put him a flank too. Basically, I don't have any good options that I need to run. But, I might be able to get something done. I just dash over here. And... Nope, actually that's a bad idea. Uh, we're gonna instead... Get ourselves behind that milk container. Ah, shoot. That did actually trigger an alien to see me. Okay, so I've got this 45% shot here, which I don't really like. I think what I'm gonna do instead is... Push up. Probably to these outhouses here. Yeah, that's pretty rough. I'm gonna hunker down here. Alright, that alien's getting a mine meld. Still hasn't managed to kill my assault, so that's good. In fact, the absolute lack of dead soldiers is feeling pretty nice right now. We've made some significant play errors, and we still haven't lost any troops. That is a lot of mine that's going off at once, so... Alright, yet another soldier dropping down to... Hard cover. 65% chance to hit once again. Position confirmed. I think this time we're gonna go ahead and just try to take a shot at him. Yes, good. Alright. With that done, I think we can try and finish him off. Oh, 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 really? I need ammo. Okay, um... Well... Don't trigger an overwatch, don't trigger an overwatch. Okay, we're good. Alright, so, some noticeable things here. An 85% chance to hit something that's pretty nasty, but also fairly dead. A 65% chance to hit a thing that's powering that group. I think I have to take that roll. Oh, Mr. Dixon. Well, let's see here. Those soldiers took a clear shot at me last turn, which means that I can run and gun. And if I get to here, I believe I'll be able to use... Yeah, I believe I'll be able to just murder the face off of that guy who stood over... You're up a little too close. 82% chance to hit. Seems pretty good. Alright, one less sectoid in the world. That's what we're looking for. So, the aliens have the numerical advantage, but they're still stuck in the death pit, and they don't really have a good option for getting out of the death pit, which is definitely going to work in my favor. Just watch that alien double move, which means that I can move up on him. This alien, despite being in kind of shitty cover, is still using his mind melts, so I'm feeling pretty good about that. And this alien hasn't moved yet, I'm not sure what's going on with him. Obviously overwatches are going up everywhere. That alien apparently thinks that he's actually in cover, which uh, he's not, so he'll learn a hard lesson soon. Uh, half of this character's cover is gone. But, I didn't lose her. Alright, and I finally take some damage. Okay, so some notable things. I can clearly see where that alien is. I don't think I can kill him, but I can't clearly see him. There's half cover available that will allow me to kill that alien outright, but I don't think I want that shot. What else have we got? There's this 65% chance, which isn't even going to cost me uh, life ammo. Uh, I just 
noticed that when I clicked on the pistol, it wouldn't allow me to use it, which I think indicates that there is a system in place where if you try to attack something, it won't necessarily let you unless you've changed the weapon that you want. Alright, so let's go ahead and see if we can pop that guy. Come on. Yes, well done, Mr. Dixon. Uh, okay, so, um, next up. Obviously, this guy is not in a great position to fire on anybody. The question I'm going to have to ask myself is whether or not I want him to. I could push him a little further forward and throw a grenade. That would certainly mess up some people's days. I want this smelled container. I don't know if that guy's on Overwatch. I didn't see him Overwatch, so I'm pretty sure this is safe. Um, that may be a risk that we can't take. Let's see here, 25% chance. Obviously I'm in a lot of trouble here, but I'm getting closer to being out of the woods, so let's see. push out here. We didn't trigger anything, and we can still see most of these troops. So I can toss a grenade if I absolutely need to. There's some notable places to toss it, too. Which guys can I see? That one at 45% chance. Yeah, okay. So my next move is to get up here. Should be in a flanking position. I am not in a flanking position. Which means I have to back off. Um, back here would be pretty good. I don't think I'd mind that at all. I'm on the move. And now I can either reload my gun or kill one of these aliens with a grenade. I don't see that alien getting into a position where he can flank us this turn, so I'm going to reload instead. And Ready to rock. I hope I'm in a better position to shoot at people later. Alright, um... So this alien definitely hasn't made a move that we care about. Which is interesting. Um, the roof's over here. Get some hard cover over here, which is pretty close to the roof. And I think I want to wait for my better guns to come up. So instead, we're going to go ahead and poke up. Getting into concealment would be good, obviously. This right here seems pretty good, but with the aliens starting to move along the side of the pit, they're actually gaining that ground back. Oh, that's a 78% chance to do 5 damage. 80% chance to kill an alien. I'm okay with that. Let's give it a shot. Alright, nothing doing. Alright, so that alien's moving up closer. Oh, yeah, that's what I get for leaving them alive. But with the panic, absolutely nothing good is going to happen. Also, apparently they've decided to add this blood decor to the soldiers, which doesn't quite fit their armor. Eh. Engaging me in a flat out firefight, which they are going to win if they continue to work like this. Uh -huh. 
but notably that alien is still pretty vulnerable. And I can still shoot him from high cover. There's an alien over there who's doing a overwatch type thing. I don't know how I feel about that yet. I'm feeling pretty strongly that one of these aliens need to die. And it's almost certainly going to be that guy. What else have I got? 65% chance, 45% chance. Yeah. The reign of terror and no cover has ended. Uh, and an alien lasted that long with absolutely no cover available is sort of a sign of how ridiculous this particular matchup has been. Um, I have a 45% chance to hit that guy, but obviously that's not worth taking, even though this is going to be pretty much moving out overall. Let's see if I can get a shot. Turns out I can't. But. I was under the impression of the fact I was feeding somebody. Now if I'm actually insane. Um, okay, so everyone else has actually fired this turn, and my rookie's in a panic. I don't know if that alien can actually do anything useful this turn, apart from... I could throw my grenade once again, but once again I'm not sure that that's the best use of my time. I think instead I just want to take this low percent shot. Alright! There's a little more damage on the field. Okay, so that alien's now visible, but still in high cover and not really a very good target. Incoming fire! This alien, on the other hand, is starting to seek hard cover. Is that all you caught? Still hasn't got anything. Alright, the soldiers are surviving by some miracle, so that's kind of nice. And we have a mind meld, which is going to be really useful if this alien decides to take a shot or drop down into the pit. Okay. Um. Ha! <laughs> I see. That would explain your behavior. Um. Okay. So now we have four aliens in the pit, all of which I'm actually a pretty decent chance to hit, but uh, I don't really want them, so the what we want instead is to take a shot at that alien who's doing the mine mill. He's at a 45% chance to hit. I can't quite get him with a grenade either. I really need to reload this gun in order to beat any effect. But there may be some other shots that I need to take first. Alright, we're notably ahead of the times on... Wilco. Let's see here. Alright, this is actually out of range of any aliens, which is something that we really like right now. Um, I think I can actually get into better concealment here. Aye, aye, Commander. And they're not going to be able to see that particular soldier. That's important, because I think what we're going to be doing this turn is beating a full Reload that gun. Um... Yeah, you know, I kind of like your spot, but it's not really anything that I care about all that much. Um, instead, we're going to take a look at some better cover options. This doesn't feel good, but it's not bad either. Roger that. I think if we get behind here... Eh. You know, I think I'm probably not comfy with uh, both those aliens getting their shots. Let's go ahead and push even further Roger back. That. And with that done, we can move this guy somewhere. I actually
actually think we might want to take that shot. If it gets two aliens, it's a hell of a dice roll, but Dixon doesn't have any chances to move this turn, so. Alright, so we have an Overwatch up. That's important to know. Especially important to know because we're still trying to get this alien down and out. Let's see here what we got. Yeah, a sneaky little alien really wants to die. Heading there now. Can I get him from here? No, he can't even see me from here. That's pretty handy, honestly. We're gonna set up an Overwatch. Let's see him up against the wall there. This is actually pretty bad. I don't have an approach angle on that alien, so if he knows that I'm here, he can come up and destroy me. But if he doesn't know I'm here... Uh, once again, we're looking at some possible risks here. Position confirmed. Let's peek through the door. Nothing going on there yet. Obviously I can see this alien, obviously I don't want anything to do with this alien. Let's just go ahead and move back. Hello, all of y'all. A 72% chance to hit that alien down in the pit, that seems pretty good. Again, we're not getting the best out of our uh, set here, but uh, I feel okay. I think what I want to do is peek around the side here and just hope that that alien doesn't figure out I'm coming. Roger that. Yep, I didn't get spotted, so with any luck, that alien won't just rogue AI on me and get something cool. Um, I can't get to that position without triggering the alien. I will need to be one further tile yeah, forward. So that means I need to hover. And this guy? Eh, I think he wants to go. Gun. And it's backing up again. And he is taking a shot. Okay. Alright, so that alien is clearly spotting for that alien. Somehow. I... I am going to get shot this turn by the crew just going to die. It's very, very sad. This was a good plan, but the alien AI is actually capable of telling when you're out of cover. <laughs> Which was something I wasn't 100% clear on, but uh, I have definitely confirmed now. So, that's garbage, but we'll live. Alright, what have we got? We have several aliens at two health or more. All of whom need to die, none of whom are going to die this turn. Push up here. we get some actual shot. Oh, now we won't. We will get to keep this ground, which is something that we want. Push this guy back behind the dump truck. And with that person having made his shot, I think it should be safe to just... Oh, what the heck, let's dash around here. That covered. Alright, that alien just stepped into an overwatch, which is... Unfortunately, we don't get our sweet revenge this turn. He is, however, in the death pit now, so... Hopefully we can utilize that to some pretty great effect. Now, it 
looks like the last alien has jumped into the death pit. So we now have complete control of the pit. It means we're going to have to do something cool with it. What do we got? 72% chance to hit an alien who is basically butt -hunt. Um 45% chance to hit that guy who is controlling a sizable portion of the alien incursion. This character doesn't have a grenade, so I can't do much with that. I think I have a view on all five remaining aliens. Which means some interesting things. Looks like I can't get the angle that I want on this alien, so we're not going to try that this turn. I can get up top if I choose to. Or I can move around and see what I can do there. Okay, whatever else happens, this guy needs to take a shot, and it needs to be a pretty good one. Obviously he's got plenty of good options. Let's see about killing alien we want to kill. Aye, aye, Commander. This guy right here. Give him a shot. Oh nice. Alright, that may have saved us. Two sectoids down for the price of one. Extremely risky shot. That means we have that 73% chance of the shot that we want. And racks up another kill. Alright, so these soldiers are now officially the luckiest bastards in the history of luckiness. Um, and even better, because I actually have all of the soldiers down in this area, that means that I can do the thing that I want to do. Just dash all the way down, hop over, run around, and blow that alien to hell. Four down, one turn, one to go. I don't think that alien can close to a point. Okay. Alright, Mr. Petritus is critically wounded. Mr. Dixon is panicking. But, um, honestly, all is well. I think as long as we can kill. Can we kill that alien this turn? Let's give it a shot. Oh, okay. I. Huh. What? I have an alien that I, uh, that, that is an interesting place for you, alien. What are you doing there? Why aren't you dead? Okay, so I have the flank I was looking for, but I've also found another alien. And that's not good. That's, that's extremely double plus ungood, in fact. Um... At a 66% chance to hit, I just can't take that shot. Do I have any better options, though, is the question. The answer is no. If I back up to here, this alien will just run around over here, and then I'll be toasted. Um, this is half cover, so that's as good as dead. My actual best option is to shoot this guy with a shotgun from long range. Which I don't like to do. This is more or less a coin toss to see if Hernandez survives. But it has to be done. Oh, you beautiful <laughs> bastard Hernandez. Okay. Um, so that leaves one left. And closing to extreme close range means that that one's dead as anything. Petritus is going to live. This alien's going down. We collected both of the melt containers, and we only lost one operative in what was a pretty spectacular failure on my part in terms of recovering melt. So yeah, we're feeling pretty good about that. Alright, watch that head back to base there. Looks like we have all sorts of promotions available. A new sniper. Hopefully not going to get horribly murdered. Our squaddy, Isadora Petridis, becoming a support. 
and Hernandez, uh, the incredibly lucky bastard, getting tactical sense and some defense. The urban combat badge is now unlocked. I believe that's specifically good for assaults, which is good because goddamn does Hernandez deserve a medal. Okay. We will be in touch, Commander. Is available if I want it. I don't necessarily want to build one this turn, actually. Commander. You've suffered a number of casualties, and haven't found suitable replacements yet. We need to start hiring additional soldiers through the barracks. Plus five defense, plus five aim against enemies in total cover. No, that's not even questionable. <laughs> Ms. Hernandez, congratulations. Really expected that to be more of a ceremony, but uh, sure. Also, man, do soldiers stand weird when they're in a decorative position. Okay, so uh, interesting that it didn't lead me directly back to the world map. Instead, it showed me where the panic is. Which, uh, yeah, okay. So we're at 24 days, which means it's too late to build a workshop. If we built a workshop, we could get the engineers that we needed for um, a satellite uplink very early on. One of the nice perks of being Europe. But uh, we aren't going to get that. So let's see what Meldry Combination does. That's pretty. So, what is it, Doctor? It's remarkable. The crystalline structure housed within the canister is actually a suspension containing billions of cybernetic nanomachines, each made up of both organic and mechanical components. My team's analysis indicates these microscopic robots are capable of assembling mechanical structures with unprecedented efficiency. With further study and some specialized facilities, we may be able to engineer a sort of cyber suit that interfaces with the human body. My team is more interested in the possibility of physically altering the tissue itself, incorporating aspects of the alien's own genetic adaptations by using the nanites to fuse the foreign material. The commander will have to decide where the greatest advantage lies. Is there anything you agree on? Given the apparent purpose of the nanites, they allow combining organic materials with one another, or with machines. We have at least agreed to call them... Meld. Something gene labs, hyperreactive, depth of perception, adaptive bone marrow. Yeah, that all sounds good. Mech one warden, genetics labs, and cybernetics labs. So mechanized cyber suits, genetics labs, which is what we're looking at. It also counts as a laboratory. And adaptive bone marrow. Recovery time is reduced by 66%. Two HP per turn up to the HP max without armor. Ooh, that's pretty good. Depth of perception. Yes, obviously great. Hyperreactive pupils. Uh, it's okay. Um, kinetic strike mono module. In uh, impossible mode, you obviously don't want to miss ever. But uh, it is. It has been a case. The case where I've taken some shots that I don't want to take. And been nice to have a huge advantage when. It would be nice to have a huge advantage when that happens. Okay. So weapon fragments are pretty crucial, but I think Xenobiology is even more crucial at this point. Since our sniper is not currently squatty level, we don't really need to get scopes just yet. I'm still having a hard time grasping what it is the aliens are hoping to accomplish here. Are they studying us? Why abduct humans seemingly at random? There must be a pattern that we haven't established right. yet. 105... I think I'm going to sell both the UFO flight computers as well. We want to keep the Illyrium and Alien Alloys, of course, but um, this should allow us to buy satellites, which we dearly need. 
77 a piece. That's a pretty good deal. I'm gonna wait two days today. Okay. So planning for the best, I could build four satellites, which would cost me an awful lot of money and maybe not to see very good returns. I think what I want to do instead is build two satellites and start on something else. Probably a genetics lab. That'd feel pretty good. Apparently it doesn't take much to build. I mean, it's obviously cheap because I'm Europe, so that's nice. And three power is not a lot to ask. Once that power generator is finished, we'll have enough for the satellite uplink anyways, so yeah, it might actually be a good time to just start digging. It's 50 plus 10 every month, but I think I actually want to start clearing these steam vents, getting the steam power up, and then build labs here in this area while building our officer training school and boundary stuff in this area. We'll hope it works out that way. Okay. So have our troops all awarded, everything's done here, time to scan. Power generator complete. Power generator is up. Satellite uplinks. Be a little cheaper now? A hundred dollars? That seems a little cheaper. I seem to recall they were 150 before. Well, let's let's see how that works. Come on! Basically just rolling dice here now. Alright, Xenobiology is finished, which means that we can build the Alien Containment Facility and the Arc Thrower. Whoa, what? 21 days? 21 days? That's... That's a little unusual, I think. I, I don't recall the arc thrower taking that long. That's... Huh. I... I think that's I still important that enough to go for. I expected that would be a priority research task, Commander. Oof. I'll begin... I, I think they're trying to make scientists a little more important here. Um, come on. Okay, we're not gonna save all of the countries this time. Commander, we're tracking okay. several we reported abductions via the hologlobe. I've got the coordinates locked in. Some more engineers to get if we choose to. Um, but we might actually want to go for money now. Let's see here. If we went for money, we could build workshops and uh, other things. Actually, I seem to recall there was some other thing going on here. Workshops, Jason's bonus when building vehicles. Cybernetics Labs. Counts as a workshop for adjacency benefits. I guess the gene labs, I assume. Wait, can I not build a gene lab? Oh, I don't have scientists. Interesting. So I'll need scientists to build the gene lab. Which means that I should probably focus on getting scientists. Um, I'll, I'll certainly be able to scrounge some engineers before the end of the second month. And since I'm too late to build the satellite uplink, I think that our next choice is going to be... Um, Oh, we can't get scientists. <laughs> okay, well then there's a couple of other things that we should look at. Asia's pretty close to panicking and worth engineers, so I think we're probably going to go there. Um, is Birmingham, the United Kingdom. I can lose European countries. I don't care about them because I have the European bonus already. Um, so yeah, join me next time, where I will almost certainly be trying to save Asia such that uh, I can put a satellite in Australia and keep a hold of all of my cotton bonuses this round. Yeah, see you guys then. Have a good night.